This video is all about drawing guns. We'll start with some very simple block shapes, learn how to turn those in space, add perspective to them, and then use what we've learned to draw a gun from reference. And then we'll take the whole process to create our own gun from start to finish, detail it up, and create something original. I'm David Finch. I've been a comic book artist for over, I think it's 27 years now. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe and share with your friends. So in order to start drawing our guns, we're gonna start working with some very basic shapes. And so we have a rectangle for the main body of the gun. And then we have at about a 45 degree angle, approximately, we have the handle and then another rectangular shape for the trigger area. And that's a really, really basic shape language that you end up with when you're drawing a gun. And this is something you should get fairly competent doing really any angle, something that might be useful for you. And I've got my old racer here. I could just take this eraser and kind of move it around and see it. And so I'll draw the angle that I'm kind of looking at. It's going to be a little bit different because my camera is capturing it differently than my eye. But a trick that is very useful is to just close one eye. And so that's basically the angle that I can see looking at this. And I'm going to tilt it down just a little bit. And again, I've got one eye closed. And what that does is it flattens what you're seeing. And so you're not seeing the kind of parallax that you do looking through two eyes. And it can actually make it much more, the thing that you're holding becomes flat and it's much more similar to what you want to draw. And so if you struggle with drawing simple shapes like this, and it's something that you find a little bit challenging, this is a really good exercise for just getting very, very simple shapes sketched in, just using a little simple rectangular kind of a shape. And all of these, again, can be brought to proper points and finished properly. And so now I've got my, my handle coming at about a 45 degree angle, and I'm going to be estimating this. But I want something that's going to be just about like that. And then my trigger area would be just like this. Now for this next example, we're going to use a little bit of reference. And so I've got an angle that is something basically like this for the main body. I've got the handle coming off just about like this. And those are my very, very simple shapes, which is really all I need right now. Probably a little short again here. Because now I'm going to take up my ruler and I've got a line here. I've got another line just about here. And that's going to put my perspective point just about here. And so I'm going to lighten this down. And the spacing of these lines is completely not important at all. All I really need is to make sure that I have enough lines that I don't need to guess when I move on to later stages. And so that's my basic perspective from this point. This is a two point perspective though. And my other point would go pretty far off the page and I'm not gonna do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start just about level here. And I think I wanna be just about here. And I'm just gonna kinda eyeball this. I think the bottom being about there is good. And so I can kinda connect these up and get something that about there. It works well enough without having to run a point way off my page. And now I'm going to do my verticals. And the beauty of this ruler is verticals are very, very quick and easy to do. I can just throw them in like this. So now I've got my basic perspective in. I'm going to go ahead and erase this all down pretty light. And I generally like to have more perspective drawn in than I need to draw the object because it gives me the ability if I want to draw more of the gun back here or if I want to be creative with it, I've got the room to do that without having to refigure my perspective. And I'm still being just a little bit loose. I just want to capture all these shapes pretty well and I can lighten this down again and get something cleaner. These line up along this axis. It comes down just about that far. I've got another circle here. From here, I've got a line that goes all the way to the back, just about like this. I've got another line just about 
here. And there's actually a, another bevel just up here. So let me get that in. The site's gonna sit just along the top here. And I've got another site and this is very easy. It's another block. So I'm just gonna follow the perspective that I have below. It kind of wraps over just about like this. And this has a, an opening for a site right here. And I probably have angled this just a little bit more. So let me go ahead and fix that and make it a little more accurate to what I'm looking at. I have a real tendency to make these things up, but it's not something I was able to do right from the start. I had to draw quite a bit of this, being a little bit more careful with my reference in order to kind of build up the mental library that I have now that I can mostly make these up. A groove just in here. And you can see I've come too far back. And so I'm gonna have to go ahead and erase that too. And it's all really about making sure that your relationships work. And this is why it's so important to put these elements in a little bit loosely just to get them established. And my handle is just gonna come off just about here. And my perspective runs here, but I want my handle my whole handle is at an angle, so this line is not going to follow the perspective. It's actually going to be angled just a little bit higher, just like that. Now this gets a little bit more complex in here, but I've got a basic shape just about like this. I've got a small rectangle here. Another bit of a rectangle shape connecting in here. Screw coming up here. Another one here, I might as well draw that in. Or my trigger, it's gonna sit just in here. Got a piece that comes off the back. Got this shape here. And then this coming off below, just a little bit longer. And while this doesn't conform to this point here because it's angled back, this side here does. There's no slide on this gun but I'm gonna draw it in. And this comes up just over this line here, it kind of bevels along. And there it is. And you can see I've come off my perspective here. So let me just correct that. And there's my basic gun drawn in perspective. And from here, I can lighten this down and make it nice and tight, get my line weights in and draw something that's a little bit more finished. So you can only see it very lightly here, but I've got perspective drawn in the same way that we did for the last example. And I'm just going to start blocking in some shapes. And I would definitely recommend when you do this to find some resources online. I've actually got a couple of things that I'm kind of looking at just as a bit of a guide. So I'm not completely in the wilderness trying to come up with something without any idea of how it's all going to fit together. So I'm going to take a few elements from a few different things, kind of add my own finish the design and we'll see what we can come up with. And so what I'm doing right now is just roughing in all of my basic underlying shapes. And this is a great way for me to try out some different ideas without being stuck with it. If it doesn't really work out, if it doesn't balance, I can just eliminate it and try something different. And so this is kind of toward the end of my barrel here. I think I'm gonna give it a bit of a handle down here, something like this. Just throw this in as a shape and I can refine it. I don't know if that'll be a handle. I might wanna come a little bit further down. Tubes are always a nice thing to have on a sci-fi kind of a gun. Well, you know, I just ended up with a bit of a line that I didn't intend, but it kind of looked like a, a bit of a metal clamp. And so I'm just kind of going with it another tube here, a little thinner than the first one. And I'm kind of using some of my sketchy lines here and there where I end up with something and just letting it kind of create shapes for me. So I am controlling it and letting it go at the same time. A screw end here, kind of an assembly to attach this upper part. It's all very rough, but I have a decent idea of where I want to go with it. So here 
and let this. I want these to line up. So this would be a bit of a smaller bit down here. And now I'll put on my actual stock handle. That's not a stock handle, I don't know. <laughs> the place where I'll put my other hand, that's what I'm gonna draw right here. And I can give it a, a texture. We'll do that in just a minute too. Draw maybe a little bit of a laser sight here. Some box shape here, put a screw there. And modern guns kind of have a bit of a square sight. So I think I'm gonna go with that. Something like this. And then there's a bit of a rectangular piece that comes off of the front of it. I'm gonna attach it down with this bolt. Kind of made sense for me. Maybe give it a bit of a slide. And I think I'm gonna do a rail that I can sit on just right there. And now under here, I'm gonna to wanna to have a place where my magazine attaches. And so I'm gonna angle it because the magazine tends to go in at just a bit of an angle. It doesn't go straight up and down generally. And so I think it can go in just about like this. And then I have to admit, I'm really, I brought out a little bit of reference because I thought it would be kind of useful, but as it goes along, I'm really just kind of doing this on my own. I tend to be a little impatient with reference and I've done this quite a bit in the past. So I have a lot that I'm kind of working with just in terms of my own experience. You'll find this will take you a little bit longer. If you've not really done this kind of thing, you're definitely going to have to take in a little bit more influence and give yourself just a little bit more time. It gets easier. Like everything else, the more you do it, the easier it is to just create it on your own. Have a rounded piece here. Maybe end this in a triangle. And bring that across. And I'm going to want my handle to come out just about like this. I think that'll work. And you can see I've, I've angled that this way, I've angled this this way, otherwise everything basically lines up. And for my circle here, the line that I'm working with goes along this way. And so I wanna be 45, or I wanna be 90 degrees to that line, and that's how I lined up my circle. I didn't line it straight up and down with the perspective. So when you're drawing circles, they always, and we've covered this with cars, but they always follow a 90 degree, whatever perspective line you're using. And there's always a very good rule of thumb. It makes it very easy to make your wheels or circles in perspective look accurate. Give it some kind of a readout here. I'm just gonna start getting a little bit more finicky with the detail. And now coming from the back here, I'm gonna give it a rounded back end. Then I'm gonna have a, my stock is gonna come out like this. I'm just gonna go with a tube for that. It's almost a bit of a, kind of a coffin shape here give it some rubber padding, a bit of support. And that's gonna be basically my design for my gun. The next stage for me is gonna be to draw a much tighter drawing on top of the rougher sketch that I had. And I have enough detail in there that I can go pretty clean and I'm not gonna use a ruler because I've got all my guidelines pretty well established, it's very easy for me to keep these working along in perspective without having to do the extra work of breaking out a ruler all the time. And I find for some lines, I'll get out a ruler and you'll find for you, when you're working, you'll know when you want a ruler. If you need a really, like this line here might've been a little bit easier for me to pull off with a ruler. Uh, I didn't ultimately need to, but if you do, it's certainly uh, not something you want to avoid. I want to round this piece here just a little bit. So I'll give it a bit of a shape like this. And at this stage, I'm using all of my underdrawing, but then I'm just kind of refining it, finding different shapes a little bit here and there, just at a much smaller scale. I know the overall shapes that I want. So I'm just kind of making decisions. Also screws are a really great way to add a lot of believability. You want your your gun or, or any kind of a high-tech element that you're working on to look like it has a real purpose and look like it's something that has been constructed. And I'm just kind of moving through, not in any real particular order, just kind of some of the landmark parts that I really want to get established well. And once I've got enough of those, then it's just kind of filling in the gaps.
And I kind of remember there was a bit of a bevel at the top of the gun that we drew earlier, just as a sketch. And I'm going to use that here. It really worked as opposed to just going straight up and then straight across. And you can see my angle here is different than my angle there. So let me just fix that. And what I ideally want is large shapes like this and then smaller shapes like this and to play back and forth with them to give it a sense of detail, but not so much detail that it starts to just close into a bit of a mess. And it's very important because this edge is, is not completely paper thin, it has a little bit of thickness. So I'm giving it just a bit of a, a double edge here and that gives it a lot more solidity in the drawing. And I'm gonna do the same with this edge here. I don't want that to look like a paper thin piece. It's gotta have some shape to it. It's gotta have some width to it. So I just drew a double line there again, and that really indicates that pretty effectively. And I just drew a gun that had this kind of an attachment on it just last week. And so it's actually very easy for me to just draw this again, just from memory from what I had done before. And it doesn't need to be perfect. It's really not the point. The point is that it looks believable. make sure not to lose my perspective here and we'll give it a nice big screw right here and so I want to kind of flow this up like that just kind of trying to think on the fly and this is a bit of a curved design and the rest of the gun really doesn't have that so I'm going to fix that make this straight bring it up and then connect like this and I think that'll work a little bit better I don't want to halfway through my design start going in a totally different direction. Otherwise it'll just look very incohesive. Something like that'll work. And I'm really making this up. So you might end up with kind of better results looking at these sorts of stocks and finding those small details for yourself. And, and really the quality of your designs is gonna entirely depend on your ability to just make things up on the fly, but also your willingness to reference and find appropriate pieces. I could find a good stock like this and I don't need to be completely married to it, but it would make this piece probably look a little bit better than this is ultimately going to with me just kind of making this up on the fly. And I've drawn these before, but just not enough that I think this is really going to have the kind of look that it probably should not feeling the best about it and I may even go in find some reference and fix it but we'll see how it works and I think that's going to be good enough actually I'm I'm not so unhappy with it okay from here things get pretty easy what we're going to do is we're going to light this one from my standard direction that I basically do most of my tutorial work and it's just going to be from this direction here and so I'm going to start just by filling in some areas that I know are gonna be dark. I know under here, this is gonna be a bit of a heavier line. I want this to sit above the piece below. And so this is gonna be a heavier line. I'm breaking it where these pieces come up because they sit higher. And so I'm gonna still give it a little bit of line weight there, but I want those pieces to rest a little higher. I'm gonna give it a bit of a line weight on the inside of these here. Underneath my screw here that a bit of an opening. I've got this kind of a as work pattern, so I'm just gonna shadow underneath that. Here, here, inset my screw here, that over here, so I'll be dark here. And I'm just gonna kind of methodically go through and start dropping in shadow underneath pieces that are lifted. I want that to be fairly deep in there, so I'll make the shadow a little bit heavier. And actually, I think I'm just gonna fill that in dark. I want this to be pretty round, so it's gonna project far enough out that it'll shadow a little heavier on than, than I did initially. And I can also use the stage to clean up a few places where maybe I came a little bit off of perspective and just kind of refine things a little bit more. 
And the more that I do, the more it informs the rest of the picture and things really start to come together fairly quickly. And the decision making process becomes much, much easier. Create a different panel here. And so this would be a bit of an inset here. I can create just a little bit of detail just by dropping in some little random shadows and I'll do the same thing here. And this is why I didn't really want to go into too much detail here because I knew that this whole area would really be shadowed for the most part. I want just enough detail that when I shadow, I have something to hang my shadow on. A recess is pretty far in. And this whole piece here, I want dark. Mostly because I really want to, that to angle under and I want to have a bit of a sense of overall lighting on this. And I kind of want to give this a bit of a pattern. So I'm going to just sketch in a shape here, line up here and here. Sketch another one here. Now I'm lining up here along the bottom. And I think that'll do it. And now I'm just going to clean those shapes up. Now I can give it all the depth it, depth it needs just by doubling the line to give it a little thickness just in here. And this is where using a 2H is so important. You really want to use a lead that will give you the ability to create the kind of detail that you want to create. I want it to look like there's elements still at work underneath these and these are openings. And so leaving a, a few little gaps like that really gives it the feeling that there are things working underneath. And for this piece, I'm just gonna draw some lines through it and I'm not gonna connect them all the way. Just kind of give them a little bit of airiness. So I'll connect here and then let it fade out and then connect here again. And I'll do another one here. I'll connect it here, let it fade, dot the line a little bit and connect again. And it gives it a sense that there's a little paneling going on, but it's not just lines on the surface. It looks like it's kind of catching the light a little bit. And now for my handle, really should have done this in the drawing phase instead of the lighting phase, but I kind of forgot this little bit. So let's get this finished in. There we go. I'm going to give it a bevel along the top. Thicker with it around that screw. And pull in some shadow at the top of these pieces here. Line weight along the bottom. And now I'm going to shadow along one side. Hopefully this will work. And if it doesn't, we may have to use a few strategies to try and so it's looking a little bit flat right now, but I'll be able to fix that in a second, I think. So I'm just going to finish this and kind of follow the process through and see how I can find a way to give this a little more dimension. I'm going to kind of double that line out and give it a bit of a cavity in there. And that gives it a little bit more interest. And then I'm going to bring my shadow down into that a little further. And I still want this to round just a little bit more. So I'm going to make it darker along the bottom. I feel like it's it's looking very flat. And very often elements that I draw in end up being a bit of a, a process like this. I just keep adding until I feel like it works. And if it does, I'm good. And if it doesn't, I end up erasing and having to work again. But hopefully we can avoid that. This piece here, I want to be fairly dark all along the bottom. And I'm leaving this, oops, let me fix that. I wanted to leave that a little bit light because I'm going to have this kind of come out this way. I cast a shadow along this side here. This is the gun casting a shadow down onto the magazine. Get some line weight into these. These are little recessed kind of, I guess, guides for how it slots in. And I think I'm going to go dark with this too. And I'm going to do that because I want this to really pop and this to kind of recede back. And I think just by going with a darker and this would really be a surface color. It wouldn't gather more shadow here than it would here, but it would just make this kind of black and this more of a lighter color. And I, I just think that, or a lighter shade, it'll kind of separate out my pieces just a little bit, or at least that's the intention. Just a little bit more detail, finishing off these last few panels. And now for this piece here, I want to give this a, a bit of a texture. I'm going to round that texture around the piece. And this isn't really the final texture, but it's going to be what I lay my texture on. So I've, 
got lines going that way, then I'm gonna come around it. And so what I have here doesn't look very nice, but what I can do now is use these little shapes and start to just drop in little bits of shadow detail. And that's it. That's our gun. That's really all we need to do. And we can absolutely leave it here, but we're gonna go ahead and give this some weathering and some texturing with some rendering. And I'm gonna start by giving this a bit of a pattern here. I'm gonna go this way and then come up like this and then just straight across. And I'm just making this fairly random. And I want to push this around this side, but I didn't want it to be totally dark. And I like this texture for these kinds of things. Just draw some shapes over top of what I have here and then add a little line weight underneath. And I can kind of do that everywhere. I'll do it here, here. Just kind of drawing in some random shapes. I want to make sure not to have a shape, a shape, a shape. You know, I want it to be as random as possible. And then I can, again, just go through and kind of pick out a, a few little line weights here and there. I don't want to get too carried away. I don't want it to look like it's made out of stone. I just want to give it some weathering. And this is something we can accentuate with a little bit of rendering in just a minute. And now I'm going to just come through here and just do a bit of a grad of rendering just up through this piece. I have to be very careful not to get too carried away because very quickly you can end up with something that starts to take over texturally. So I just want to use my rendering just to give it a little bit of dirt and detail. I'm going to give this kind of a wire mesh sort of a pattern. And I can, I can also use some of my line I pushed this whole piece in just by putting some rendering over it. And that kind of pushed it back without completely making it dark. And now I think I'm gonna get my ruler out and clean this line up just a little bit. I want that to be a nice thin line, but it's looking a little sloppy and ill-defined. So there, okay. just down here. Just make this a little bit more clear. And that's it. That's my process for drawing guns from start to finish using simple shapes, then perspective on top of those shapes, rough in, and then final detail. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to tune in Monday nights at eight o'clock Eastern for our Monday night draw live stream with Meredith and Dave, and I will see you in the next video.